Today I want to talk about the five things that I would have done differently if I could go back when I was first leaving the United States and before I moved to the Philippines. The first thing is, is I would have left much, much sooner. So I didn't end up leaving the United States until the spring, specifically May of 2021. And when I first decided that I wanted to leave the United States and go abroad was really back in 2014. And so if I could go back, I would have left in 2016. I would not have been able to have done it in 2014, but I would have left in 2016. And because of that, one, I would have had a lot more revenue built up over time because I would have saved so much money living in different countries or specifically living in the Philippines. And I would have been better off initially financially as well as now financially uh, as far as having even greater savings than I was able to accumulate because I spent so much money in the United States running an office, paying for American workers, quite frankly, um, lots of money on that, that really I could have cut those costs, again, made less money uh, for myself, but more money each month would have gone into my bank account and remained in my bank account because of those savings. But I didn't do that. Now, I will tell you this, that had I left that early and I had got stuck here in 2020 through basically 2021 because of the situation that was going on with lockdowns and everything else, I would have left. I would have left during that period of time because I didn't want to live like that. I would have headed exactly where I did head in 2021, which would have been in Eastern Europe, into Albania, into Serbia, and to some of the other places in the Balkans, to which was more free. And then after things opened back up, would have come like I finally did after that, here to the Philippines. The second thing that I would do differently and one of my biggest regrets or mistakes, I guess, that I made is do not linger. When you are leaving your home country, do not linger. Cut your cord, cut your ties, and just get out. Do not leave loose ends. Do not slowly leave. Just cut the cord and go. And in my examples of what happened to me when I was leaving was I took way too much time to shut down my business there. I really wanted to continue to try to help people get things put to bed in a proper order, but it some, but that cost me. It cost me lots of money to do things that way. What I should have done is just told people to get, to go hire somebody else um, that, you know, my life had moved on. I'm sorry that the courts got shut down <laughs> for over a year and they wouldn't let us work, but I didn't cause that. And so at that point, I would have just wished that in several cases I had just refunded monies or in most cases, quite frankly, people owed me money and I just forgave it. But I continued to try to stay and wrap those things up. Um, I wished I hadn't done that now. I wish that I had just determined I'm going to go live my life and take care of me because it cost me a ton of money to do that and very little thank you, quite frankly. Now in the personal life, as far as lingering. I I took forever to get stuff sold, to get stuff given away. Possessions that you've had for like 20 years, very reluctant to give that up. And by the way, if you're hearing a bunch of noise, I'm near a street that apparently people like to come by and rev their engines. But anyway, I digress. I wished I had just gotten rid of that stuff earlier, cut the cord, decided I can live without this thing, gone minimalist as soon as possible. Because again, by holding on to that stuff, you're costing yourself money and storing it and everything else. And you're delaying your ability to move. So in my case, at the very end, I got delayed basically three months from my preferred exit date, just trying to get the highest, best value out of the things that I was trying to get rid of, trying to sell, I knew they had value. I would have been better off and saved money on accommodations and utilities and everything else if I just given some of that stuff away. So my advice is don't linger. Once you have decided that you're gonna leave your home country and you're going abroad, you're moving to the Philippines, wherever, give yourself a target date and just do it. Get rid of everything in the meantime and go. 
The third mistake that I made was not being laser focused on exactly how I was going to make money, how I was going to fund my adventures, and falling prey to basically what is known as shiny object syndrome. So when I was trying to figure out a way to fund my travels and make a living overseas, I really, I looked at all kinds of different things. I looked at doing online businesses, affiliate marketing, different ways that I could make money abroad, rather than focusing on the skill that I had and how to make that work. So by training, by licensure, by everything else, I'm an attorney. And this is a high, is, is a you know very high paid skill. My problem was rather than focusing on how I could do that abroad, I was trying to figure out other ways prior to leaving to do that. And it seemed virtually impossible to me on how you could do that. Again, I was overthinking it. I was not thinking outside the box and realizing that there were things I could do other than trial work that would allow me to make a good living overseas or anywhere in the world, quite frankly, that I had an internet connection. And so once I figured that out and I just focused only on where that problem was, and it was the same problem that you would have running a, a business in the United States. It's basically client acquisition. Where are you going to get clients to do that work? And the difference is in the United States, rather than having a storefront or referral word of mouth, it's basically you're going to have to do online advertising to get that work and develop a, develop a referral network once you are online in the areas that I was going to be practicing. Be the same thing for anybody. Whatever your skill is going to be, you'll need to focus on either, if you're a freelancer, client acquisition to get those done and to get customers or maintaining a base of customers that are going to give you consistent work or better yet, in some cases, just working for somebody else and having them always guaranteeing you so much work. Now, once I got abroad, I was shocked. I was very shocked at how how much I was able to continue to get people coming to me, contacting me, uh, especially in the first half of the year about different type of work that I was doing in my business. And also I had built up uh, some online stuff that didn't pay a lot of money, but that was bringing in, you know, some money on there. Over time, I developed both of those, focused on the ones that were making me the, the most money. And, you know, it's worked out, you know, it, it actually works out. But I had overthought that for so long and worried about things that really should not have been my focus. It was much easier than what I thought it was going to be. And simply thinking, I'm going to be abroad, how's this going to work? That was the scary part. All right, the fourth mistake that I made was taking the time to go ahead and ship stuff from the United States that I did want to keep to abroad myself, rather than leaving it there for someone else to take care of for me. And I did this originally, again, we had planned on the Philippines being our home base. It was one of two possibilities. As far as having a home base in Asia, we were also looking towards Thailand. The Philippines was not open when I left, so wasn't sure. But I did have family here that I could have shipped things to fairly inexpensively in a phallic bayon box, yon box, however you pronounce it. And I didn't do that. I left it for someone else and had not packed it. It's just, it was sitting there ready to be done. I wished I'd gone ahead and done that because, well, it would have been done. Let's, let's just put it that way. It would have been done. It would have already been here waiting for me. Uh, realistically, I probably didn't need to save some of the stuff that I did save because it's available here in the Philippines. But I wasn't positive. When I would talk to people, you know, they'd, they'd tell me it wasn't available, you couldn't find it. Turns out you could, they just, that wasn't their lifestyle. But I would have gone ahead and shipped that or I wouldn't have shipped anything at all. Uh, realistically, the only thing that I absolutely think you have to have or you should have is your electronics, just because you can save so much money doing that. And by electronics, I'm talking about your handheld stuff, your cameras, your laptops, your hard drives things of that nature. But I wish I had gone back, shipped that box, I only had one uh, to prepare and got it done rather than having to depend on other people because it just, quite frankly, just doesn't get done. It's not their priority um, and I'm not negging on those people or anything else. Again, 
it would have been voluntary for me if I'd been doing that for somebody in the United yeah. States. And sometimes life intervenes. Now this last thing, the last mistake that I think that I really made or the big top five was I wished I had done all of my own research for every single country I was going to. This is not just the Philippines. This is, this is really realistically everywhere that I went. I had more information on the Philippines already than I did on other places I went. But a lot of what I did is I would, besides doing research, I'd watch YouTube channels of what was going on in Albania to try to find out what it was like life on the ground. And I found that was probably the worst mistake that I made because the channels that I was watching, the big secret about YouTube, travel channels. Um, the smaller ones, not so much. If you go to a smaller one, they're just getting established. They're doing it for fun. They'll actually tell you the truth. Uh, it's probably why they don't grow very quickly <laughs> uh, in those countries. But so those travel channels, they're gonna show you all the nice things about a country without showing you any of the negatives. And again, that was exactly what happened with some of the stuff that I was watching out of Albania, a little bit out of Serbia. I didn't watch a lot of videos about Serbia other than really housing and Airbnbs and stuff like that. Basically all the information was wrong. I mean, the people were just, the travel channels were either whitewashing it or in a lot of cases, there's just, there's just no other way to put it. They were lying. They just were lying because they did not want to hack off the local population and to hurt their views. And I'll give you some examples because I was in Albania when I started my YouTube channel and I did one video that was about, because I wanted, I wanted good, honest information to be out there and what I'd found was wrong, but it was about the cost of living as far as um, Airbnbs, short-term accommodations, apartments. And I was telling what was realistic on the ground. And there had been a, what I would call a gentrification and increase of prices due to foreigners coming in Alba to Albania because it was open. So the prices had almost doubled in some cases. So I was putting out accurate information that I was finding out going around to different apartments, to different landlords, actually trying to find stuff and showing, also showing those units of what was available. And I had tons of people tell me I didn't know what I was talking about. You could get it for half that price. And they didn't know what they were talking about. They were depending upon what other very large YouTube channels were telling them. And those guys simply were not telling them the truth. They were just, they were glossing it over or, and I suspect in many cases, they weren't even in Albania, that they were talking about stuff they had seen on somebody else's channel from two years ago. And those prices just were not correct. Now, some of the people that were making comments were being truthful because they were locals who actually spoke Albanian talking about long-term leases. And of course, yeah, they could get that deal. Um, but as a foreigner coming in for a month, three months, you weren't gonna get that uh, because at a minimum, people wanted a six month lease to get those good rates in Albania. Same thing happened in Serbia. I saw all of these big channels talking about the accommodations, city center, you could get it for these prices. Fat chance, wasn't gonna happen. And if instead I had done more research on some of the expat community boards, specifically Facebook is a really good place to find expat communities in these major cities. They have some great ones in Albania. And if I had done that early on before I actually got there, then I would have found out exactly what I then put out on YouTube, which was the truth, that these, these prices that you were seeing simply didn't exist anymore. And you know, there's a reason that some of these YouTubers do it. Again, they don't want to hack off the local population because again, they're doing it for a living. I, I find it, I wouldn't do that. I would, um, I would never want somebody to travel to a different country because of what I had told them on YouTube and they find out that no, it was gonna cost them twice as much because by God, these people budget for this stuff. They depend on you to tell the truth. Now, if somebody's watching one of my videos two years after I filmed it and I've told you what it's costed there and you haven't checked the date, that's not my problem. But at the time, I'm gonna give you accurate information based on what I'm seeing. Um, and I wish those other channels had done the same thing. And again, some of them, I just don't believe they were in country. I just do not believe they were in country. And I think that they were just 
making up what they had seen from two or three years prior from somebody else's channel. So that's reality. I don't mean for that to sound so negative, guys. It's just, it's so real. And I want, if any of you guys are going to any country, the Philippines or whatever, I want you to do your own research to look at stuff and see, is there a motivation behind why somebody's telling you this? Because you could get over there and be in for a big disappointment. I'm in a very fortunate situation that, you know, when I, when I got to those places and I had to pay a third or even twice as much that I had the ability and the budget to be able to do that. And a lot of people, especially younger people who are backpacking around and, and traveling, they're on set budgets. And that could mean the difference between them traveling for six months being cut down to three months or even down to two. So just be aware of that when you're watching any channel on YouTube is do your own research, go into these expat groups, go into message boards, see what's actually being said there. Usually they're more timely and they're much more honest because most people don't get paid anything to go in and you know make a comment on a expat group. Hey guys, if you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe so you can find it again. And if it was good, hit the like button so other people will know that this information is worthwhile watching and honest and hopefully helpful to you guys. Thanks a bunch.